about the Gap and Go. Now the Gap and Go is a phenomenal, phenomenal candle pattern. The Gap and Go is when you have a heck of a lot of people who are trapped. A lot of people. Being trapped, again, means you bought in to the stock and you're now losing money. Or you sold the stock short and now you're losing money. So, it's specifically when you have a white candle and the stock gaps down, white candle, stock gaps down, it's a gap and go on a swing trade. On the day trade, this does confuse some people, but on the day trade, if you're going to trade it as a gap and go, you're actually going to be trading it in the first two minutes. So you're going to be in very, very, very quickly. Very quickly. So in order to do that, you've got to make sure that it is the perfect gap and go. And in order to do that, it requires some additional time frame analysis. So I'm going to go see if I can find um, any perfect gap and goes out there. And I think Caterpillar comes to mind. So, ladies and gentlemen, first question um, is Caterpillar, uh, was yesterday's candle or Friday's candle, was it white, yes or no? Was the prior candle white? The answer is yep, yeah, it is. Barely, but it's white. Says that it opened at 91.77 and closed at 91.88. So by 11 cents, I believe Caterpillar is white. So that means that if someone bought into this, including my analysis, I was also bullish. Right, I was also bullish on Caterpillar. And the stock gap down today. Notice that I had a stop right here and right here. And I had analysis that said, consider a bull put spread if we close above. And so again, that was somewhere up here. So this particular gap, I'm not going to say that this is very rare, but I guess I'll kind of squeeze this in. Um, if I ever am trapped on a trade, I know for a fact other people are as well. What I mean by that is with my analysis, if I say, hey, this is my analysis for Caterpillar, um, here's my entry, here's my stop, and if the stock triggers, you know, gaps down or whatever, if I'm trapped, I know some other people are trapped as well. You can have the exact same thought process. If you thought something on a stock, as far as your analysis goes, someone else thought it as well. Okay? So bottom line, Caterpillar was a white candle yesterday and it gapped down. Okay. Is there, are we done? Well, if we want to day trade this, no. Swing trade, we got to wait at some point for the day to kind of close. But as of right now, ladies and gentlemen, what would your sentiment for Caterpillar be? Bullish or bearish? Sentiment at this point is bearish on Caterpillar. All based on this gap. Now we can add the fact that you have a good gap, you have good volume, it also appears that you're closing below a support, and it also appears that you're um, below the wick of this candle and you might close below the wick of that candle so it appears that this is a pretty strong gap on Caterpillar. So now if we were in a, I'll get to this later, but if we were in a, if you're, is anyone in a bull put spread right now? This is a little too far for Mentorship Monday but if you are I would consider unraveling it today or tomorrow. Depending on, depending on the time. Yeah, I would, uh, I would unravel that bad boy. So I don't think anyone's in it. If you got, if you are, let me know. Um, all right, so it's a good gap. Candle's white. Okay, so day trade is a gap and go. Now, in order to be what I call, I put this in quotes, perfect gap and go. It has to meet very, very specific criteria. 
it has to have a white candle on the daily. And it has to have a white candle on the hourly, the 15, and the 5 from yesterday in order to be a perfect gap and go. Very, very few stocks fall into this criteria. But when they do, they can be quite profitable. So, your daily is a white candle. Your hourly, mm, look how many white candles, ladies and gentlemen. Are people trapped, yes or no? The answer is yes, people are trapped, people are losing money. What also is strong about this gap? Gaps are even stronger, ladies and gentlemen, when they get past a pivot, AKA a support or resistance line. So if Caterpillar opened here, it would have been bearish, I agree. But do you agree, students, that it is absolutely more bearish that it opened where it opened as opposed to the blue line? And can you understand why? Yeah, because I mean, let's let's say that um, Alan, that you bought into Caterpillar somewhere in this Juno time frame, you would probably place your stop right there. And if you did place your stop right there, you just got stopped out and. Not only did you get stopped out, but pretty much everyone else got stopped out as well. So Richard Karasik said gap below support. Yep, gap below support and it trapped people on both the hourly and the daily. Okay, cool. So now we go and we look at the 15 minute chart. Is the 15 minute candle also white? Ladies and gentlemen, yes or no? Is the 15 minute candle white or black? Well, it's white. So, so far we're one time frame away and if there's a white candle on the five minute, this is a perfect gap and go. Is it a white candle on the five minute? And the answer is no. It's a very, very small black candle. Very, very tiny. Now, with that being said, the five minute chart is the only chart that doesn't make this a perfect gap and go. Let's just hypothetically say that that candle was white, okay? Let's, can we do hypotheticals for a moment? Let's hypothetically say that it was white. How do you trade perfect gap and goes? Well, if the candle is white on all time frames and it's gapping down, or the candle is black on all time frames and it's gapping up, you go to your one minute chart, and this is a very, very fast move. This is not a trade that takes a long time. You now, and Gaston, you asked about this earlier, you hop into your one minute chart. And you take the two minute low and you set your stop on the two minute high sometimes. And I'll tell you what the difference in just a moment. So this is the first candle, this is the second candle. So if you took the two minute high and you took the two minute low, this would have been your risk to reward. Your entry would have been 89.54 and your stop would have been 90.44. Did the trade work, yes or no? Yeah, the trade did work. What's one thing that I do not like about this trade? Can anyone tell me? And this is the one time that even if, even if the candles tell me this is a perfect gap and go, there is still a time where I will not take the trade. Can you guys tell me why or when or what? There's my boy Fred, Victor Gonzalez. I like it. Victor and Fred, uh, Fred's one of my coaching students. He's just absolutely crushing it. Risk to reward. Guys, look how huge that risk is. That's pretty much a dollar. That's massive. So think about this in day trading terms. Your Caterpillar, in two minutes, the stock has moved a dollar. This has to move at least two dollars more for you to get paid on the trade for just a simple one to two risk reward ratio. That's huge. 
I mean, a dollar? So on a, again, quote unquote, perfect gap and go, still always consider risk to reward. If you want to keep watching the one minute chart, Gaston, and find a better entry somewhere, like an entry here and a stop there, or an entry here and a stop there, you definitely can do that. You can. However, what I will oftentimes do is if the risk reward's not there because the candle's too big, I'll change it to a five minute chart and I'll trade it just like anything else. So notice where this trade could have been taken. So again, the trade worked. I'm not gonna disagree with you, but it had to go all the way down here to get 2R. It's just a really, really big move. Had you waited a little bit, exponential moving averages, here they are. Ladies and gentlemen, is this a failure of the 10 exponential moving average, yes or no? The answer is yes. So if you waited for that move, boom, boom, and you had a bearish entry here, Uh, this has been your bearish entry approximately um, once it failed the 10 exponential 8 8 point two eight or whatever eight eight two seven and your stop was right here so your stop is above the pivot right above that resistance level 88 56 whatever is that a better risk reward ratio and the answer is yeah right your risk is much much smaller so if the stock continues farther, you make more money. Simple as that. And if you didn't get on that trade, you might have taken the second failure around here. And if you didn't get on that trade, you might have taken the low of the day breakout retest, which is probably one of my favorite trades to take. I don't like low of the day breakout, so here's a low of the day right there. I'm not a big fan of going in on the breakout, but I love the retest of the low of the day. So here's the low of the day, boom, it broke out. There's the retest, boom, boom, boom. You could have gotten in bearish here and set your stop there. And that right here, ladies and gentlemen, that's 2R, done for the day. Thanks for playing. There were four or five instances today on Caterpillar where you could have made 2R. All you needed was one. So whichever one you did or whichever one you chose, as long as you can understand the opportunity and see the opportunity and understand the why, you have the ability to do what? The three parts of trading. Create a plan, follow it, mitigate risk. Done, boom, simple. Simple as that. Um, Farouk says, could you take the second candle in the five minute? Um, you could, but I still wouldn't really know where your risk reward is. I mean, I can look in hindsight and say, you know, what I would have done or could have done. What I'm simply saying is, based on what we do every single time, this trade worked out perfectly. Randall said, those are a lot of spinning tops to enter bearish, don't you think? Uh, where, Mr. Smith? Down here? Down, down this level, right above trigger. Right here, those. Noon, 11, oh, okay, right here. Yeah, um, no, no, not really. Um, Spinning tops are great indecision candles. They really are, but that's what they are. They're indecision candles, right? So the edge is without question bearish on Caterpillar. So if we're taking these, these candles, these trades, right, these spinning tops, we don't know for 100% certainty what direction the trade's gonna break, right? We don't know for 100% certainty. Spinning tops allow arrest to occur. They allow the stock to gain momentum and they allow traders to, you know, move on and do whatever. And this is specifically during lunch. 
So oftentimes during lunch, there's what some people refer to the lunchtime lull, you know, which is one of my least favorite words. I need to write down my, I need to write down the dictionary, my least favorite words. Lull is one of them. So many L's. <laughs> Trough and lull. Yeah, two, two big not fans of those. Anyway, so you have the lunchtime lull. Lunchtime lull, stocks trading sideways, and uh, you get all those candles. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, I personally would have simply said, I don't know which th which way this is going to break, but here's my plan. The edge is most certainly bearish, without question. If it breaks bearish, I'm gonna take the trade in the direction of the trend. Bearish entry, I'm gonna sell short at 87.49. I'm gonna place my stop above the continuation pattern and above the exponential moving averages, 87.73 will be my stop and from there I don't know what's gonna happen that's a plan then I have to follow it and the rest I have to mitigate risk so you're right I wouldn't just hop in bearish but I would wait for it to break lower you're correct so kind of like um, Under Armour we'll go back to look at Under Armour but does that, does that help with the perfect gap and go ladies and gentlemen does that, does that kind of clear it up Because the gap and go simply means that the gap is very, very strong. It's really all it means. It means that the gap is likely going to continue in that direction. Gap and goes are very, very strong. And kind of like their name says, they often go in the direction of the gap. They move. So my edge on Caterpillar uh, is going to be bearish until we get to the next target. I think that's a beautiful little gap and go. Um, next target's 80 and some change. Give me one second. Let me let, let, me let this load. Um, just by the way, FYI, for those who are joining for the very first time, we, we take a, a musical break, um, you know, for water or for whatever you guys want to do, um, between about 2.50 to 3 Eastern. So if you're kind of feeling tired, or you need a, you know you need some coffee or a banana or whatever you do, um, we'll be pausing in about 14 minutes, 24 minutes. Just FYI. So there's a support around 81. So that's really my next target on Caterpillar. 81 and some change. Oregon says, is there any swing trade potential um, on Caterpillar? Yes. Yep. <clears throat> it has moved pretty far so tomorrow if we do get a retest or we retest a little bit I think I would continue to let this roll out bearish but it's it's a strong gap so if you got in at the I would wait for a close for sure I'd want to close below this um, below this wick and if it does close below there I would be bearish all right cool Brian, so you could do an $80 put sale if there's money in it. Uh, yeah, I think I might wait for it to come down and bounce before I do a put sale. So I might actually let it do this if it does that and bounce before I do a put sale. Unless you have a really good premium for it. Uh, so there's Caterpillar. Caterpillar, I believe, was also on the gap down list. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it. And there's just so many things that gap down today. It, it would have been hard to, you know, find out which one you liked best, but wow, there's a long list. I'm probably missing it. I'm sure it's on here. CLF. Let me go see how CLF is working out for uh, Zane. CLF. He got into this one bearish. Um, Randall said, can you set your triggers at close to the end of the day rather than waiting for the next day? Yeah, uh-huh, that's, that's usually what I do. Um, if, I'm, if I wait for a close, I set my, uh, my entries at 345 Eastern. So if I want something to close, I wait for that time frame. After 345, 
is when I get into my clothing uh, clothing positions. Okay, so on CLF, uh, again, as a, just a review, what type of gap is that? Date for the day trade. This is a retest gap. Yep. Black candle gap down retest. Okay, cool. Simple as that. So if we hopped over to the five minute chart, do you guys see where it retested? I don't even have to pull up the moving averages. Can you see without the moving averages where it retested? <clears throat> I bet you a dime to a donut. It was right around here somewhere. If I did not have my moving averages, which I won't have, um, I would have absolutely placed an entry either uh, 661 or po potentially 664. Let's just say 664. Um, and then a stop would have been above the pivot. So it would have been very, very close getting stopped out. But you didn't, so that's okay. That's all that matters. So that would have been your entry. And so let's just go to the 10 just to verify. Uh, 10 exponential moving average, boom. Boom, shakalaka. So yeah, I would have entered bearish um, 664. So I can see that there's this candle, but I'm trying to teach you guys without saying, oh, you know, I'm not gonna enter trades perfectly every time, I promise. So this would have said to me, okay, here's the moving average. You know, here's a very, very nice evening star reversal pattern. I want a lower low. Boom, 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 lower low. I've gotten embarrassed, set my stop right there. Two R's is pretty much the low of the day. Here's a low of the day breakout. That's where Zane got in bearish. Here's a low of the day retest. And the trade's been continuing nicely. So Zane, I do know, is in this one bearish. So I'm proud of you on that one, Zane. Um, CLF, no, not really a good swing trade, but, but that, was a, that was a day trade. But it worked out great. That would have been another two, three R trade. CLF, so Zane, I'm proud of you, man. You guys, I think you guys will see him in the third hour. He's usually working. Um, maybe a swing trade. I mean, tr truth of the matter is, this thing is so low. CLF is so, so low. But yeah, it definitely could continue lower, but 498 is like the 20 year low ever. So if you were to go bearish, I'd actually kind of go bearish like right this second. I'd place my stop at 743 and my target be 498. It's about a one to two best case scenario. But that's really all I would do. Zane is here. Good for you, Zane. Proud of you, man. See, that's a one to you know one and a half or two best case orkin, so I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't take it my myself. It's a good day trade though. Cat is a better short turn uh, short swing trade, yes. Uh, let's go look at this 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 guy. Apple. There you go, Apple. Brian Bodie. So Brian, um, he said, my, "Blow my stop currently." So did you exit, Brian? <laughs> that is my question. Uh, let me see if Larry is here. Larry, Larry. Larry, I do not believe is here. Niels is here though. What's up, Niels? Niels and Ozzy and Paige. Um, so Larry Howe had a bull put spread expiring Friday, and I don't know what he did to it. I'm sure he'll tell me later. I'm semi sure. I I think I think he exited it, or unraveled it. Um. You know I don't know, I don't know. But either way, he had a 110, 108 bull put spread expiring this week, which was this past Friday. And Apple closed at uh, 109.33. So I'm assuming if Larry uh, unraveled it, he m made pretty good money on that trade or at least broke even. Um, right now, this is my current trading plan on Apple. I was quite bullish on Apple. 
after this gap. What kind of gap was this, ladies and gentlemen, right there? I'll take the moving averages off. So we look at just candles. What type of gap is that? That is a retest gap. Yep. White candle, gaps up, retest. Very simple. So we got a retest gap. Um, did Apple retest? Well, yeah. Yeah, it did. All, you know, the very next day it pulled back. So I started getting in bullish on that day right there. I was bullish on Apple. Um, and then this candle showed up. So we had an evening star reversal pattern. And my simple strategy was, okay, well, I was, I was in shares. So my strategy was if we uh, move below this green line, which is about a 111.42, some change, whatever you know, whatever it was, very, very close to that price, um, buy some protective puts. And if we close below this candle to exit my shares and hold on to my protective puts. So that's exactly what I did. So we moved below here. I bought protective puts. Then we got to my stop. I exited the shares entirely. And then I held on to my protective puts. Um, which I think I had a contingency. Well, I don't think. I know I had a contingency order to exit some of those today. So uh, let me see. I wonder if those exited. Yep. I know two of them did. I think they all exited. You guys want me to go check? Type it a one if you want me to go check. All right, cool. Let's go see if they exit because I had um, my target on my protective put. So again, on protective puts, you know, you don't try to get rich. Those are your insurance positions. So when you're when you're trading insurance, ah, uh, hold on, my computer's freezing. Can you guys still hear me? Okay, you guys can still hear me. All right, so it's just my, it's just Google Chrome. It's freezing. Uh, okay, hmm. let's try this again. So this is my uh, real life account with Interactive Brokers, and this is who I swing trade through. I day trade uh, through a proprietary firm, which I'll share with you guys more later in this week. I'm sure at some point. Uh, SD1. All right. Um, Randall, so why the proprietary firm? Uh, that's why I day trade through Randall because they they offer leverage, you know? If you day trade, you have to have over 25,000, which is fine, you know, whatever. But proprietary firm offers you 1 to 20 leverage, which you cannot find anywhere else. Um, you cannot trade option. You can only trade stock, but that's what's phenomenal because you, you only need $2,500 and you get $50,000 of buying power. So I'm not going to go into that much, but Arthur Pierce is a prop trader. I'm a prop trader. There are many people here are prop traders, but it's a day trade only. Day trade only, and it's uh, not dangerous at all. That's what stops are for, Brian Bodie. So anyway, here's the positions. Um, Let's hop over and, uh, yep, I'm exit out of all of those today. So here is Apple 112 put quantity zero. So my plan, and I have three naked calls currently, uh, 116 call expiring this week. Um, on Apple, I had, uh, I had a covered call on that day because I was like you know that's not the most bullish candle in the world when I got that candle which was kind of bearish but you know that pattern makes an evening star reversal which is bearish and then uh, once it broke here I had a plan to exit my position buy protective puts hold on to my naked calls and it's working out great so as Apple continues a little bit lower uh, my thought process is it should bounce at some point 104 is a really, really strong target uh, support level on Apple. So I'm, I'm out of my quote unquote bearish position on Apple. But 103, 105 and some change, that is a pretty good, uh, pretty good support. 
I would be semi shocked if Apple does this. But it could. I won't say it won't. It's a little bit too big to be a double top. <clears throat> so I don't think specifically that uh, that that will happen. If I had to make a guess, I would think that it does close below this uh, neckline, trap some bearish traders. A lot of people think it's going to go bearish. We'll do a little bit of this action, and then we, then we do that. That's my thought. That's my thought, but you know, we'll see. We shall see. We'll be prepared for anything, whatever happens. But I am now out of my protective puts on Apple, uh, mitigating my losses severely, which was beautiful. So I think overall I probably broke even or lost very, very, very little. Um, I'm also in a Best Buy naked put, which I'm down on right now, uh, numerically. But... Um, very very interested in Best Buy apparently the implied volatility if you guys are interested in put sales the implied volatility on Best Buy is very very high because they have a holiday earnings report or not earnings report but like a holiday sales report or something coming out pretty soon my plan on Best Buy is I'm not going to worry about Best Buy at all because it's a $35 put sale way down here unless we close below $37.49 I'm not going to look at it if we close below 37.49, I'm going to put in an order to buy to close um, at a limit, you know, to exit once data starts doing its thing. But keep in mind, if you guys like doing put sales, Best Buy has a lot of implied volatility and uh, they have a holiday earnings report or whatever coming out. Um, but yeah, my expiration is in two weeks. So. As long as Best Buy stays above 35, which I think it will, I'll be just fine. But if it, you know, we'll see. Brian said, would that be like trading over earnings? Not necessarily, because uh, it's not earnings. It's just a holiday shopping report. Which doesn't affect just Best Buy. It affects kind of everything. All retails. So, I mean, what's it going to do? I, I don't know. I really don't. I have a plan, though. I'm ready to see what it does. So those are really the only two trades that I'm in right now. This Apple and Best Buy. I'm in Apple calls naked 116 expir uh, strike expiration this week. Naked puts on Best Buy um, 35 expiring two weeks. So. Um, let's go look at um, Arthur is throwing out Halliburton. Halliburton looks like a fun little move. This is a nice little gap down. So you had some white candles, gaps down, trapping some people. A, a, a tiny gap. It's very, very small, but it's there. So it's tiny, but um, it, it's noticeable. Let's go to the five minute. See if there's anything in the five minute. Um, five minute does look nice. Um, sold off a little bit, retracing, and we want to roll over. That's that's kind of our goal. That's what I'm hoping, hoping for. So there's Halliburton. Um, so let me go look at the hourly chart, see how it looks on the hourly, and yeah, we're trapping people. Not tons, but you know we did gap below here, uh, which is a pivot. So that's that is trapping people. Fifty minute charts. Um, let's look at the exponential moving averages. See how they look. Exponential moving averages. Okay. So on Halliburton, if we made it below 38.56, we would be below the moving averages on the 15 minute chart and the hourly chart. Let's go see if we would be below it on the five minute, and if so, that might be a decent trade. I don't know if it'll trigger, but it could, it could work. Um, let's see, so we want to be below all the moving averages, yeah. So let's go ahead and put this one. This is one that Arthur Pierce called out. He's a great trader. 
I uh, was another um, he was another personal coaching student of mine and great dude great great guy um, Arthur am I gonna get a chance to meet you when I come up to Sacramento by the way FYI coming out to Sacramento um, first week of February Sacramento California uh, 3856 would be my entry personally stop would be above this pivot yeah my computer's lagging a little bit today um, stop would be approximately 3873 this is a day trade setup right here anytime I'm on the five minute chart you can pretty much guarantee that this is a day trade setup um, I don't really let me go back to the daily chart and see if I have uh, a swing trade set up mm. I could do a swing trade setup as well on Halliburton it's not my favorite though I would just say that so I personally won't do that my swing trade setup on Halliburton would be um, Below, I would wait for this candle to close. Below the low of the day, stop above, you know, right here, target down here somewhere. So let's go ahead. And, this is the day trade on Halliburton 38.56 by 38.73. I doubt it triggers, but if it does, that's cool. Um, so I'll go ahead and type that in the chat pane. 38.56 by 38.73. Bearish. Now, for the swing trade, um, I'll come back to that one at the end of the day. Cheryl said, based on your numbers, it's not quite 2R. Uh, what, the low of the day? As target, Cheryl says yes. So low of the day would definitely be target. Low of the day, approximately thirty-eight twenty-three. That should be close. Should be really close. Let's see, thirty fifty-six. So we have almost twenty cents risk. Would be forty cents. That would be thirty-eight. 15 yeah you're about seven seven or eight cents off um, low of the day as being 2 R so what does that mean for you Cheryl or what does that mean for me I guess not not you specifically but so, so the target um, Target for most of your retests, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be low of the day. Almost all of our bearish retest trades, right, you have boom, boom, boom. Um, oftentimes, this is target one. This is your entry. This is your stop, something like that. It's usually how that plays out. Um, Cheryl said, it's good, but I just want to get your uh, attention and get your take on it. Yeah, I like the uh, bottom line is I like the trade. Um, if I like it good enough that I would take it, uh, it's very very close to two R. I think it would, I think it'll be close enough. I'll put it that way. If it's like one or two cents off, it's not quite two R, but I'm okay with it. Yeah, I think I almost I grew with Arthur verbatim, and it might get a little bit better if it trades sideways and then rolls over. We might even have a, a few pings difference. I don't think it triggers. But you know who knows? We'll we'll see later. So let's go look at um, Under Armour. Under Armour, um, as I mentioned earlier, did trade did trade up to the fifty and fail, fifty exponential in the five. So I don't think we'll have a day trade for Under Armour. I think it's already kind of doing its thing. So the rest of these trades um, are probably gonna be swing trades. So the third hour, ladies and gentlemen, can you guys believe it? It's almost been two hours. Is that crazy or what? I know. Flies. By. It flies. 
lives. Yeah. Um, Stan says, I got an uh, Under Armour Bear Call spread during week four. Oh, very nice. Very nice, Stan. That's a beautiful one. Um, BP down really, really nice today. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, what type of gap is this? Retest gap. Yep. Retest gap. Um, five minute chart. Mmm. Looks pretty. Very pretty, in fact. Bearish entry approximately 36.14. Stop approximately 36.30. This is obviously a day trade. My computer's running a little slower than normal. Yeah. I can dig that. That's that's pretty. 36.18. Uh, what's this price? I'm sorry. 36.14 by 36.30. Bearish. Target, low of the day. That'll be interesting to see if that, uh, if that plays out. Very interesting indeed. But yes, it is a retest gap, right? Prior candles black. Um, you could have taken some of this action on the retest. Or taking potentially this action right here. Um, Randall says maybe a bracket trade. Um, maybe. I never, I never disagree with the bracket trades. Uh, the edge is definitely bearish. If we look at a daily chart, daily chart uh, gap down. All moving averages are bearish. We gap below, you know, support, cleared pivots, all that good stuff. Uh, if we come into the hourly chart, hourly, um, you can see we, you know, a bunch of white candles, they're trapped. Looks like the hourly is about to form potentially an evening star reversal pattern. Um, 15 minute chart on British Petroleum. Stock is coming into about the 10 and the 20 exponential moving average. So in my opinion, the edge is bearish on BP. Um, I, I don't disagree with you that we could bracket trade, but I would say then that this would probably be my bullish entry, or at least my entry to say I'm more bullish than bearish, and therefore that'd be a good place to have a stop. What do you guys think? Any questions about that? Amy, so I want to tell one of my kids about the trading room. All right. I like that. Bring it on, Amy. All right, Brad Reed's posting the same trade. So, yeah, we'll see how that works out. I mean, bottom line is I'm okay with taking this trade and, and absolutely nothing happening on it. Because the thing is, it could, and that's what I'm excited about. This could happen. This could happen. Um, this could happen. This could happen. And I'm not exactly sure what will happen, but... I'm willing to risk one R, one risk unit, to make more. Best thing you can do is trade in the direction um, of the trend, trade with the edge, all that jazz. I like it. So, ladies and gents, uh, let's go take a nice little musical break. Go get you guys some water or banana. Um, I'll see you guys in about, uh, I don't know, six minutes or so. Seven minutes.